This is the frame for the bottom and I ripped these all to width and then I cut them to length using the uh, compound miter saw. And uh, now I'm just going to check to make sure that those cross cuts were accurate to give me a nice square piece. So I'm just going to measure diagonals. I've got 63 and a 16th on that diagonal. And I've got 63 and a 16th on that diagonal. So I've got the saws set in right and uh, they're cutting nice and square. The way I'm going to put all these frames together is to use dominoes. In this case, these are 8 by 50 millimeter. And I've made lines where I'll center the cutter on the domino cutting machine. The finish I'm using on this piece is one half pound, or excuse me, one pound cut shellac. That's one pound of shellac flakes per gallon. And uh, it's called platina. It's a very blonde shellac. And I'm just, I'm just wiping on a couple of coats on the inner surfaces of these frames before I glue them up. Okay, so at this point, all the uh, frame and panels have been uh, put together, glued. So um, now I'm going to go ahead and trim all the pieces to, to depth, and then I'll trim them all to length. Now the cabinet's going to be held together with dowels. So here's the vertical panel that's in the center and the three big drawers are either side of this panel and so the dust dividers come out like this and so I'm going to dowel them with two inch long three eighths inch dowels I'll put all the way through this uh, vertical panel which is about three quarters of an inch thick Now I've drilled quite a number of the dowel holes uh, and so I assembled this uh, with basically just a couple of dowels to make sure everything fits right and I also wanted to measure this little gap that you can see between the center vertical dividers and the top. Uh, that's for a spacer piece that will make it so the drawers don't uh, butt right up against the bottom of the top. It'll give it a little nicer look. Okay, I'm going to start doing the glue up now. And the first parts to glue up are these horizontal dust divider panels. And these panels have uh, six dowel holes on each end. So I've made a little mark on my dowel as to how deep I want it to go into this dust divider panel. And I'll go ahead and install these dowels in the left-hand panels. And when the glue is set, then I'll 
uh, install the center uh, divider, vertical divider, and the right-hand panels. And, and uh, when all that's done, uh, I'll also then put dowels into the end panels so that I can then uh, attach those onto here as well. Now I'm getting ready to attach the back. Now, the back on a lot of pieces of furniture is simply to keep dust out. In this piece, it's actually structural. Uh, if you can imagine the back and the bottom and the sides forming kind of a box beam. So the back has torsion control, it keeps the chest from racking. So I'll be gluing it uh, into uh, rabbits that I cut into the sides and uh, I'll also put some screws through the bottom to bring that, um, you know, the back piece firmly in contact with the bottom. So to drill the holes for the screws, I've clamped the back into the carcass as tightly as I can so the screws will be in perfect alignment. So I'm going ahead, I'm drilling countersink screws. Later on, I'm using two inch, by the way, uh, screws for that and then later on I'll plug those holes and clean them up and even though it's the bottom you'll never see it but that's just the way I like to do business. Now when I glue the, the back into, into these uh, rabbits uh, there's going to be squeeze out, glue squeeze out uh, and I'm not going to be able to get rid of that squeeze out while the glue is still wet because this whole thing is upside down and I just can't reach up from the bottom and do that. So I'm using our product here, uh, it's called Waxy Lit. It's just a sliding agent. It's, what it does is it just puts a little film on the finished part here that I don't want glue to stick to. And then later on, I can pretty much just peel the glue off of there. I try not to get this onto where the glue is supposed to actually soak in because then of course you won't get a glue joint there. You just saw me rough out the legs. These are uh, about one and nine sixteenths square. And the bottom two inches of the leg has a taper on the two inside faces. So I've got a taper jig here that I've set up uh, to make that cut. And uh, I'll make uh, one cut and then I'll rotate the leg 90 degrees and make the next cut. And I'll just do that for all four legs. Now I've got the tapers cut on the end of the legs and uh, while I was at it I cut tapers on the end of two of these little stubby legs which I'll cut off and these will go in the center of the, of the uh, dresser. But now I need to carve, uh, cut out a um, three-quarter inch uh, rabbit in the corner of each corner leg so that they'll fit over the corner of the, of the carcass. So I've got a straight router bit set to a height of three quarters of an inch. Uh, the cut is a stop cut. It's got to end down here before I get to the taper part. And uh, so I've got a piece of tape here that shows me where to start the cut. So I'll just basically just ease the, the wood in like this on an angle and then make the cut. And I'll do this in about four passes because it's got to go three quarters of an inch deep. And now uh, you certainly don't want to try that in a single pass.
just wanted to get a little close up here for you of the fitting of these legs. You can see the leg has a notch that I put in it and that fits around the bottom like that. And because the back and the sides, you know, you try to glue it up, you try to make it flush, but to get it perfect, I went ahead and used my little uh, skew plane here. I guess that's what it's called. It's got a skewed plane with a guide on it. And, uh, you know, running it kind of like a rabbit plane would, I went ahead and just made this joint here between the, the side and the back perfectly smooth and level. And then when this glues in, it'll be just nice and tight. Now, since I finished the side in advance, I need to kind of rough up the shellac along right here. So I made a line where the extent of the travel of the leg here, I made a line and I'm just going to rough this part up so that when I glue this, it'll be a nice joint. Here's the dry clamp up for the legs. So first thing I do is I put on that strap and that uh, just holds the legs in position there so that I can get clamps on, just keep them from falling off. And then I put on the uh, the short clamps, the, hardest, the ones that are red, and that gives me uh, something to rest the big long clamps onto. Well, what you can see here is the underside of the top, and uh, I'm about to install that onto the carcass, but I've got a couple things i got to do first. I wanted to show you the spacer that I glued on, and it had to be wide enough to uh, also act as a, the top drawer guide. There we go. Now all I have to do is mark the dowel positions so that I can dowel this down onto the top. Uh, but before I do that, I'll put some finish on these lower surfaces, the bottom surfaces, and, uh, but I'll hold off on finishing the top uh, because that's a whole lot easier for me to do once this is installed. There's a total of uh, 26 dowels, and uh, to try to glue that many dowels up at one time, you really have to have your clamping down uh, pat because um, uh, you're, you're, you're really trying to force a lot of you know, dowel joints together. So I um, did a couple of things. First of all, I did a dry glue up, and so I've got my clamps all ready to go. I know exactly how I'm going to clamp this. And the second thing I did was I took my dowels and I put them in the microwave for a few seconds. Uh, the idea being to uh, uh, dry them out some. And by drying them out some, <clears throat> they shrink in size. And where I, earlier I couldn't put these in these holes at all by hand, uh, now they slide in really easily. The quarter inch dowels even feel a little bit loose in the holes. Which is, which is really good. When these dowels soak up the glue, they'll expand back and uh, you know, over a period of time, they'll equalize their moisture content with the rest of the wood and become very snug. And I did that so that when I'm trying to get this top in place, I'm not fighting um, these dowels. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll slide in much easier. Now, one thing I do want to point out with you know, be very careful if you decide to try this microwaving 
because a microwave heats up objects from the inside out. And so even if the outside feels uh, just warm to your touch, the inside is a lot, a lot warmer. And of course, you don't want you know, wood to burn if you put it in the microwave. So, um, you know, for the, all these dowels, you know, I put it in for like a 30 second blast and then I did another, another 30 second blast later and a, and, and a, and a you know, 20 second blast um, with time in between to, uh, to, you know, just to make sure that they didn't overheat. I just wanted to get them hot enough to dry out some. Well, now I'm going to start working on the drawers, and I have a, a number of these stair steps that are uh, eastern white oak. They're over 100 years old. They came from the back stairs of an estate house in Hampton, Virginia, and they were bought at an auction by a friend who then gave them to me, and I wanted to make something special out of them. Now this was a number of years ago that I've had that I received these. So I brought them out with me on a trailer to Washington State. And I think now that the sides and and backs of the drawers for my wife's chest is, is a special project. And to have some Hampton, Virginia wood where we lived for a number of years uh, in it uh, is pretty exciting. Now these particular stairs, I believe, were constructed in New York State and then they were shipped down to Hampton. And you can see, or I can see, I hope you can see, that uh, they came down to a, a business named Brinson in Hampton. And in pencil here, it's hard to see, but it says via Old Dominion Steamship Company. And this is written on a number of, of these um, planks and we're looking at the undersides right now and that makes sense because Hampton is on Hampton Roads which is connected to the Chesapeake Bay and it makes sense back in you know a hundred years ago the early 1900s um, things were still shipped by steamship between uh, ports and we didn't have trucking we didn't have bridges and tunnels across these big waterways in Chesapeake Bay and Hampton Roads. So steamships are what brought this. So I think this is pretty exciting um, that we have this wood that, that says this. Now unfortunately, I'm going to have to uh, sand this down so we're not going to see this anymore, this writing. And that's why I'm putting it in here for posterity. And, uh, but I'll be sanding these down in the drum sander to get them smooth and then I'm going to have to rip them. You can see these are all jointed with a spline in uh, two grooves and uh, but the joint joinery if you can look closely is coming apart and so what I need to do is I need to go ahead and rip these to get rid of the joint the joinery and then do butt gluing to make up my 10 inch wide uh, sides and back. I tried to count the annual rings just on this one uh, board. It's a little under six inches. And you can see here I made some marks. And uh, each mark is 10 rings, or as best as I can count. And each ring, of course, is one year of growth. So I figure this one six inch piece is uh, 83 years old when it was cut. And uh, considering this is uh, old growth wood, uh, meaning that it probably came from what we call a virgin forest, one that's never been cut before. Um, the tree itself, I'm sure, was uh, uh, quite uh, wide and you know, large diameter. My point is that this tree uh, you know, went into some stairs on a building that was built around the turn of the last century. Um, and so if you just do the math, uh, this, this tree probably predates the Revolutionary War. I suspect it predates it by quite a bit. And, uh, 
and, and now, you know, I'm lucky enough to have it for um, the drawers of, of this piece of furniture. Uh, I think that, you know, that gives due reverence to the tree uh, instead of it becoming firewood. It's just such wonderful wood. Uh, it's now going to have a life of its own that's going to last uh, hopefully another 83 or 166 years. I'm using my Lee Dovetail Jig. I've got a uh, 8 degree bit in my big heavy router. So I'll go ahead and just show you how I do one of the cuts. Now it's time to fit the drawers. I make the parts oversize just slightly. I also make the pins uh, protrude just slightly proud so that they can be shaved down. Uh, the first thing I want to do though is make sure that the bottom is flat and I am going to do some planing on the bottom to make sure it's perfectly flat and then I want to get the height of the drawer correct. I know that my shop is a little more humid than the house. So uh, I know that once this piece goes into the house, the relative humidity will be a little less and the, the wood is going to shrink, uh, you know, across the grain. So I'm going to shoot for something in the vicinity of a sixteenth of an inch of uh, vertical clearance at the top of the drawer. And so I measured my pocket and I've set my table saw to the correct height. So after I true the bottom, I will then use a table saw just to take a, a, a just a hair shaving off of the uh, top of this drawer. And, uh, and then I'll be pretty darn close to the fit that I need. Once that's all done, I'll take the drawer and set it onto my bench. I've got a special holder on my bench you'll see in a moment and using a sander I'm going to take down the pins and take down the sides the amount that I need. Then I'll just do trial and error fitting of the drawer. At that point I'm ready to go ahead and do a final sanding on the drawers and final finishing on the outside and when it comes time to actually fit the drawer I'll use a little lubricant on the sides of the drawers and on the uh, inside of the pocket I bought these uh, hammered copper knobs. Give you a good look at that. And the idea is to have alignment vertically here, 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 and here. And I just think that'll give it a nice uniform look. It's going to be a little stiff because there's no finish on the drawers. They're not lubricated yet. Well, with the help of some friends, we moved the chest into the house, and uh, this is what it looks like uh, completed. Um, but what I really wanted to show you was how the drawers worked after putting some lubricant. It's uh, really night and day. This is the same drawer I just operated dry in the video, and now this is how it operates with some lubricant.
So I hope you've enjoyed this video of making a chest of drawers and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.